All right, so what's going on, guys? So if you haven't heard already, in the Pacific Ocean, this island uh, called Tonga, which is off the coast of New Zealand and, and Australia, just northeast and, and near the Fiji Islands, went through a volcanic eruption, and the after effects have been uh, pretty uh, wide-reaching. And so the tsunami, that's uh, the warning and things like that, that have gone through sort of that region spreading all the way from the Pacific Islands to the coast of Japan, which is, I think I looked it up, it was like 5,000 miles away. And then it even has impacts in America. In California, there's been warnings, 5,400 miles was uh, the distance. So it, it's pretty equidistant. So it's only a 400 mile gap from Japan and from from California, which was very surprising to me. But the impact to this is gonna be, I think, you know, a meter, maybe three, four meters high of water, which will hit the coastal uh, cities. And so, I mean, comparatively to other ones in the past, maybe it's not as a, a big of a threat, but at the same time, if you think about what this tsunami is, it's traveling thousands and thousands of miles and the and if you haven't seen sort of the the image, uh, the satellite image of, of the eruption itself, it's pretty epic, right? So it's huge. It's on this Earth, and you can see it just pop uh, in on the on the uh, the map there, and that impact reverberating and going all the way, you know, all, you know, 360 uh, across from its epicenter all the way to the coastlines is pretty uh, dramatic in, in a way. And so I'm not trying to overplay uh, this, but if you think about that kinetic energy and what it's doing, spreading mile after mile, mile after mile until it hits something that it has to impact, it's pretty significant. And so in, in the natural realm, earthquakes and tsunamis, it's always been pretty, pretty size, uh, sizable and pretty epic, right? And so as I was thinking about it and praying through it, and of course, we'll see what the after effects are and the damage, a lot of ash, I think, coming down on some of the cities uh, in, in Tonga and things like that. So we'll uh, continue to pray and just continuing to process what's, what's there and just reading up on it. Uh, and of course, heart goes out to them. But as I was thinking through it and as I was processing it, the Holy Spirit began to remind me of uh, something incredible. And just like how that volcanic eruption was so loud and, and people around that area in, across Asia heard that uh, sonic boom uh, of a noise, just like how loud it was and just like how much of an impact that had all the way across. It wasn't just one direction. It was all the way across, spreading all the way through uh, the Pacific Ocean, thousands and thousands of miles, the impact being so great, just like how that volcanic eruption had such an impact on the lives and people in that region, the Holy Spirit has the same impact in your life, in the life of your church, your community. But a lot of people, they're not recognizing it, they're not realizing it. And this is a reminder. And if you think about the Bible, the Bible talks about how in describing the Holy Spirit, it's like a mighty rushing wind. It talks about how it's like the waters, right? And even in uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, it, ta it talks about how the Spirit of God moved across the face of the waters. And if you think about that imagery, it's almost exactly like what the tsunami is. It's just moving across the face of the waters. And even in Acts chapter 2, I wanted to just read this, but in chapter 2, it talks about this when the Pentecost came. Uh, verse 2, it says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And if you think about that imagery of the water, of the mighty rushing wind, and how it impacts, and people get filled with the Holy Spirit, the same goes for right now. So many of us are walking around, living in our own flesh, trying to use our own power, thinking that we're making an impact, thinking that we're doing something out of uh, the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is sitting just outside of you and desiring and, and yearning for you to be an explosive eruption in your community, an explosive uh, eruption in your individ individual life, in your nine to five job, in your community, in your uh, you know family, in your friends, and all of, you, uh, of the spheres of life that you uh, live in. But many of us, we're ignoring it, we're rejecting it, and we don't recognize the power and the impact that it has. And just like how this uh, volcanic eruption was such a uh, un unforeseen sort of sudden, violent sort of uh, sound and, and, and rushing mighty wind coming from heaven, right? The same goes for when you receive the Holy Spirit and allow and invite him to 
to take over, to control your life, and for you to go out and making uh, an impact in your community, in your life, and in your thoughts, in your uh, emotions, and your feelings, all these different things, right? It's not you acting. It's the Holy Spirit. It's Christ in you. It's a, a, a godly, a righteous thing. But many of us, we don't recognize it. We're laughing it off. We don't uh, understand the power and the impact. And that 5,400 miles, that 5,000 miles of it traveling all the way across, permeating through all that uh, that mass, right? All of that that water is such an incredible journey. And many of us don't realize that even in our own life, if only we were to receive and invite the Holy Spirit uh, to act on our behalf, you would see that kind of an impact. You would see an epicenter from your life spreading all the way across like that for miles and miles and miles to impact all of the spheres of your life. But because we're so ignorant, because we're so closed off, because we're so prideful, because we want to operate in our own thoughts, and our own feelings, because we presume the will of God, because we think we're doing something and we're calling on the name of Jesus, but we don't have the Holy Spirit in us. We're not even saved to begin with for many of us. We're going around and we have these poof little, you know, uh, empty sort of smoke balls. It's not the Tonga volcano eruption. It's not the epic sonic boom that you have in the spiritual realm. And it's just this little tiny boop and it's of no impact. And we don't realize that, but the Lord is calling us. The Holy Spirit is calling us to be able to wake up, to realize and see this in our own life. And it begins with an acceptance of an understanding, a recognition, and then for you to invite uh, the Holy Spirit on a daily basis, on a in an hourly basis, to be able to go out and do your work, and so that's the issue we have right now. That's the reminder that I want that I was given that I want to share as an as a word of encouragement to you guys. We'll talk soon, and uh, God bless.